So here we're told that the particle is initially at the ground state of the harmonic oscillator. So what that means is that the initial wave function is equal to xi naught, and then this is the xi naught corresponding to the case where the um, where the potential is equal to one half m omega square x square. And then from the earlier derivations in the book, we know that this xi naught is equal to this expression. So now we're told that suddenly the omega it becomes two equal to two omega. So now the potential changes and we have a case where the omega is equal to two omega. And so we know that this wave function is going to keep on evolving as time goes on under a new potential equal to one half m two omega square x square. So you can see we switch two omega inside this place. So we get two m omega square x square. So this is the new potential. And then under new, this new potential, we want to find two things. We want to find the, pro the probability that we will get a measurement of h bar omega divided by two and a probability of getting h bar times omega. So how do we do that? So first of all, recognize that the formula for the nth energy level is equal to n plus one half h bar times omega. And in this case, our omega is equal to two omega. So it should be omega prime over here. And we're going to express this in terms of omega. So we're going to get rid of the omega prime, so it's equal to two omega. So you see this is equal to two n plus one h bar omega. So where n is equal to zero, one, two, all the way to infinity. And that means the possible energy states uh, are h bar omega, three h bar omega, five h bar omega, and so on. So all these are odd numbers. And immediately you see that it is impossible to get h bar omega divided by two. So the probability that your energy measurement is equal to h bar divided by two is equal to zero. It is simply impossible. But then you see that it is possible to get h bar times omega. So now we need to find the probability of getting this, uh, this energy level. So we can do that by considering the uh, complete wave function. So we call that the complete wave function can be expressed as something like this. And then we're told that the probability that the energy level returns the nth energy level is equal to cn squared. So this is this was a relationship that was proved earlier in the book. And we are going to use this right now. And since we want to find the probability that the energy level is going to be equal to h bar times omega, and incidentally, this actually corresponds to the first energy level of this uh, new potential. So under this new potential over here, so under this new potential over here, h bar omega is actually the ground state, the lowest energy level. So uh, in, in this case over here, the energy being equal to h bar times omega is actually equal to the probability of getting the lowest energy state. And in that case, that means the probability is equal to c0 squared. So all we have to do is just to find the constant z naught, and then we can find we can square it, and then we can find this probability. So let's focus on finding c naught, and then we can do that by using Fourier's trick because we know what the initial wave function is equal to. We're told that it's equal to the ground state corresponding to the classical frequency, so where the frequency is equal to omega. So now it's not the classical frequency; but the, now the frequency is equal to two omega. So we know that this is the initial wave function, and then this is going to be equal to uh, substituting zero to this general expression over here. So I'm just applying Fourier's trick. I think should be fairly used to the process at this point. So recall that this is, uh, so don't get things mixed up. This is the xi naught corresponding to this uh, new potential over here. So don't mix this up with the origin, the usual xi n that we're usually dealing with. And so we get this expression, and uh, this term over here becomes 1 because at t equal to 0, e to the power of 0 is just equal to 1. So we get this expression. So now in order to get c naught, all we have to, do, have to do is just to apply Fourier's trick. So we multiply both sides by xi naught, and then we integrate both sides. And then because uh, all the other combinations, so for xi 1, xi 2, xi 3, they're all orthogonal to xi naught, they're all equal to 0. So the only term that survives is c naught, xi naught, and 
when you multiply xi0 with xi0 and you integrate it, that's just equal to 1. So on the left-hand side, you're just left with xi0. And on the right-hand side, you have this integral that you have to solve. And then once you solve this integral, you can essentially deduce what uh, c naught should be equal to. So we have this expression here. This is the initial wave function. And then we multiply this by xi0. And once again, this xi0 is the xi0 corresponding to this uh, potential over here. So this is the case where the omega frequency is equal to 2 omega. And in order to find xi0 under this frequency, it's actually pretty much the same as this expression, only except instead of omega, we substitute 2 omega inside. So we substitute 2 omega in that expression. So if we substitute 2 omega, it cancels out with the 2 you have at the bottom, dx. So once we solve this integral, we can find our c0. So let's just rearrange some of the terms over here. So you see you have a 2 to the power of 1 fourth, and then you have a whole bunch of these constants, and omega divided by pi h bar, and then we have an integral. And then we have, so this is 1 half, this is just 1, so in the end, if you multiply these together, you get 3m omega divided by 2h bar x squared dx. And you see that this is just a regular Gaussian integral. So in case you don't know how to evaluate this, so this is a rather famous result. So if you integrate e to the power of negative, negative kx squared, this is just equal to the square root of pi divided by k. So I'm not going to prove this, you can prove it with a double integral. But uh, we're going to use this result over here. So that means that this integral over here is equal to the square root of pi divided by the square root of k. In this case, our k is equal to 3m omega divided by 2h bar. So 1 over the square root of k, that's just 1 over, that's just the square root of 2h bar divided by 3m omega. And here comes my favorite part. You just cross everything out, and then you see that you're left with the square root of 2 over 3 times 2 to the power of 1 fourth. So how does this help us? So going back to the original problem, we call that the probability we're looking for is equal to c naught squared, right? So all we have to do in order to find this probability over here is just to square this result over here, which we found to be equal to c naught. So if you square this, you see that this is equal to 2 but 3 times the square root of 2. And incidentally, this is actually equal to the numerical answer that Griffiths gives us, 0 0.943. So this is equal to 0 0.943. So this is your answer.